It's funny when you deep it. I mean, I've read all about your struggle stories. Cute. But of course, I look shiny up. Here, money talks. And I am not about to pay for all the damages caused by a bunch of unemployed losers who have nothing better to do with their time. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to ASR, African Stories Realized. This is our recap and review of episodes 3 to 5 of Law, Love and Betrayal Season 1. I'll give a summary of the episodes then my personal critique, so beware of spoilers. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's get into it. Episode 3 picks up at Gugu's place, but tension begins to grow between her and her boyfriend Tabo. She struggled getting ready for work, where she arrived late in their unreliable jalopy, which broke down in the GNA parking lot. Gugu's colleague, James, arrived and questioned if Gugu and her boyfriend would last, suggesting it's not easy to date a lawyer. In the GNA reception, Fez berated Gugu for arriving late and recommended she get an apartment in Santon, closer to work. Gugu took his advice and went house hunting with her boyfriend. However, Tabo wasn't supportive of her moving to Santon. The couple argued briefly and parted on bad terms. The following morning, Tabo picked Gugu up for work, where the couple kissed and made up after he apologized for not supporting her decision. Meanwhile, Ayanda dealt with a high-profile makeup case, where the founder was being cut out of a deal by her distributor, SOA. However, Ayanda's client, Knox, was a walking PR disaster addicted to making social media rants. Gugu helped Ayanda find a strategy for her case, but in the deposition that followed, while Ayanda argued on her behalf, Knox went live on social media, which didn't help her case. Just as it seemed like the case was lost, James gave Ayanda a way out. Ayanda advised her client that they can't win the case in court, but if she instructed her followers to cancel SOA on social media, it would apply pressure on the distributor and its partners. It wasn't long before SOA returned to the negotiation table and yielded to Knox's demands. The episode ends as the girls go out for drinks to celebrate an unlikely win. Episode 4 picks up with Gugu being assigned to the Fresh Pick case, a big supermarket chain and one of GNA's biggest clients. The case required her to protect the supermarket chain against injured employees, which goes against her human rights principles. Despite her resistance, Mr. Gumedo forced Gugu to take the case. Upon realizing that Gugu was settling the Mukwena land case for 2 million rands, Fez questioned Gugu about the low settlement, revealing that the land was valued at 300 million, and Mr. Gumede was aware. A shock Gugu confronted Mr. Gumede, demanding to know why he forced them to settle for a low amount when he knew the land's true value. Mr. Gumede was unapologetic, but after hearing about the land's true value, Ayanda returned to the Mokwena land to investigate. She discovered that Chairperson Mokwena had disappeared, leaving angry residents behind. Meanwhile in Tembisa, we're introduced to Dindle, an old friend of Tabo and Gugu, who arrived at Gugu's family home asking Tabo for money, suggesting he owes her for something that happened in the past. Gugu reluctantly began working on the Fresh Pick case and discovered that the anonymous tweets came from a young lady whose parents lost their supermarket to Fresh Pick. Gugu tricked the young lady into admitting that she ran the social media account which incited violence against Fresh Pick, but the young lady's lawyer counter sued GNA and posted a video of Gugu threatening her online. Due to the risk to her family, Gugu stepped away from the case, leaving James to close. Meanwhile, GNA's resident investigator, Sam, tracked down Chairperson Mukwena. When confronted by Ayanda, he revealed that he took a bribe and deceived his people with the help of Mr. Gumede who orchestrated the entire scheme. Ayanda buried the information, lying to Gugu and insisting she back off before revealing to her father that she covered for him. The episode ends with Tabo warning Gugu that Dintle is back and wants 30,000 rands to stay quiet. Episode 5 picks up with Gugu and her boyfriend arguing over the 30,000 rand demand from Dintle, revealing that Dintle once switched places with Tabo who was driving while drunk when he got into an accident. The couple had a meeting with Dintle, who revealed that she owed a debt to a loan shark, forcing Gugu and Tabo to scramble for the desired amount. 
Gugu went to work where she was assigned to a case regarding the contamination of a river by Legacy Paint. She went to the river to get samples where James joined her and the two lawyers ended up ruining their outfits when they fell into the mud. Gugu invited James to come clean up at her grandfather's place in Timbisa. At her grandfather's place, Tabo revealed to a concerned Gugu that he had taken on Dinte's debt from the loan shark. However, Tabo stormed off when he discovered that Gugu had brought James home. Meanwhile, Ayanda grappled with the case of a DJ who lost his wife and was now embroiled in a battle with her family for her burial rights. He wanted his wife to be buried in Joburg, whereas her family wanted to bury her in Limpopo. Ayanda won the case easily, but when she returned to GNA, Gugu arrived in her office to request an advance on her salary, which Ayanda immediately rejected. Gugu was then confronted at gunpoint by a masked goon in the GNA parking lot who fired a warning shot before telling Gugu to settle with legacy paint. James came to the rescue, chasing away the assailant and comforting a frightened Gugu. He was then able to trace the masked goon's car back to legacy paint. A deposition followed where Gugu leveraged the evidence of her attack to win a 6 million rand settlement for her clients. After winning her case, a desperate Gugu went to Mr. Gumeda's office and requested an advance on her salary so she could pay Dinte. However, Mr. Gumeda maintained that he couldn't go over Ayanda's head if she refused to sign off on the advance. Gugu continued pushing Mr. Gumeda for an advance, with him even threatening her with insubordination. But the episode ends on a big reveal, with Gugu declaring to a shocked Mr. Gumede that she is his daughter. What a cliffhanger. LLB left us all in shock this week. At first I thought Gugu was speaking figuratively, but she was serious and Mr. Gumede's reaction was priceless. The whole scene was gold, especially when Mr. Gumede told Gugu to dump Tabo if he can't maintain her. Boyfriend Daga and Gilles Goloto and... Lalela, Ms. Maros. You are a lawyer. Carry yourself for some decorum. And quite frankly, the presumption to think that I give a damn about your love life offends me. If Lendo Taig was to take care of you, maintain you, then get rid of him. I replayed the scene a few times just to appreciate how good it was. Gugu and Mr. Gumeda have actually had great chemistry since the first episode, so this reveal makes a lot of sense. Gugu's choice of occupation and career path might have been motivated by a desire to follow in her father's footsteps. It also suggests that Gugu made some calculated moves so she could make it to GNA, like targeting Mr. Gumeda's ex-wife. It also makes sense that the reveal came after she had earned some of Mr. Gumeda's respect. He's clearly a very difficult man to please, so I understand why Gugu didn't just come out and say it when they first met. It would have made her look opportunistic. We haven't heard much about Gugu's parents, but we have to assume that Mr. Gumede had an affair with Gugu's mother back in the day. Maybe she worked for GNA as a cleaner or as a receptionist. I also like the contrast between the two sisters. Gugu clearly inherited the little humility Mr. Gumede might have had, whereas Ayanda takes after her father's ruthless side. The sister's working relationship is already strained, so you can imagine how Ayanda will take this revelation. However, I expect it to stay private for now, because it doesn't even seem like Tabo or Gugu's grandfather are aware that Mr. Gumede is Gugu's father. James and Gugu seem to have great chemistry, but I think it's more platonic than romantic. It seems like James comes from a similar background to Gugu, which is why he has a soft spot for her. I'm not ruling out the possibility of them hooking up, Maybe their friendship will develop into something else, but right now, I don't think they see each other as anything but friends. But James is a flirty guy, so I can't rule out any intimacy happening between the two. When Dintler was first introduced, I was concerned that Tabo was having an affair, but I'm pleased with the direction the show took. The situation with Dintler is moving the story forward, and despite being an ethical lawyer, Gugu is not opposed to bending some rules for those she loves. It also might be why she didn't do more about Mr. Gumeda's intervention in the Mugwena land case. If it was anybody else other than somebody she believes to be her father, I don't think she would have let it slide. GNA must be rubbing off on her cause we've seen a slightly different, more ruthless side of Gugu in the last few episodes. Big up to the cast and production once again. For me, this is the best local show right now. I've always enjoyed white collar shows like Suits, Billions and Succession, the boardroom dramas. Shows that make an impact without relying on action or comedy. That being said, LLB utilizes humor to perfection. He did that. You got one thing wrong, though. It's Ayanda Gomez Williams. Oh, shut up, Trevor.
the dialogues are airtight and the secret source to how the show keeps us engaged. There's 7 episodes left in season 1, so they might as well start shooting season 2. Keep the hits coming. We'll be back next week with another review. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is ASR for the love of African filmmaking and storytelling. Thank <laughs> you.